Most of us spend a good amount of time outdoors this time of yeah. year, but for one man, it nearly cost him his life. He has just been home for a week after two months of medical care from a tick-borne illness. ABC 13's Noreen Turin, has, who has struggled with her own Lyme disease, joins us with this lesser talked about disease. Yeah, Dan and Mark, it's called ehrlichiosis, and the majority of the cases this awful looking creature, the Lone Star Tick, is the culprit. The case could be mild, even undiagnosed, and you could be fine. But as Carrie Paget nearly experienced, it could also be deadly. Every step Carrie Paget takes is a huge stride forward when you consider just how close he came to dying. How are you doing? Just two months ago, Carrie was lying unconscious in a hospital bed. Oh. We literally had people coming in from out of town to say their goodbyes. We thought it was over. All thanks to a little tick that triggered a huge landslide inside his body, shutting down his organs one by one. He ended up on a ventilator. Um, so he had the port in his neck for dialysis. Um, it was it was really scary. They, he had a feeding tube for three weeks. To me, it's nothing short of a miracle that he's with us. Carrie's sister, Doris Martin, and his wife both stayed by his side as he spent almost all of May in the hospital. But Carrie only remembers what led up to that. He was sleeping a lot, and his cognitive function was off. Then one day, he collapsed. My wife went to see my daughter, the stepdaughter down in North Carolina, and she just happened to get home in time, and I was in the bathroom on the floor. And from, I don't know how I got there, who got me up, or nothing. They had to shock him on the way to the hospital. Um, but sepsis had taken over, his kidneys had shut down. So I'm an infectious disease specialist. Dr. Robert Brennan spoke with me about this case with Carrie's permission. He entered the picture on day one. He was very sick. He had a temperature in excess of 104 degrees. He was very confused. Um, he had the signs of early renal failure, just a lot going on. They immediately moved Carrie to the ICU. Dr. Brennan initially suspected meningitis, but the spinal tap came back negative, so he moved to the next logical illness. And here we are in central Virginia in the early summer. The warm and the ticks are out, and this gentleman was active in his yard, had actually removed ticks a week or two before this had happened. Um, so tick infection moved rapidly up the list. Dr. Brennan says Carrie's symptoms were more similar to Rocky Mountain spotted fever, but he did also test for ehrlichiosis. The initial test came back negative, but there's a special test that we can do that is more specific, and that took several days. It came back positive for ehrlichiosis. Dr. Brennan says it's more common in our region than Rocky Mountain spotted fever, but most patients don't get nearly as sick as Carrie did. Occasionally they'll get sick enough where they'll come in the hospital, but usually not with what we call multi-organ system failure, kidney failure, respiratory failure, liver disease. As the antibiotics went to work, Carrie slowly started improving. So the feeding tube comes out, you know, then the ventilator had, been, had come out and you know, eventually the dialysis stopped and we were able to get that port out of his neck. Carrie was finally released after about five weeks in the hospital, but he spent another month at Guggenheimer Health and Rehab to relearn just the basics from walking to talking. Like I was in elementary school. I mean, it was like ABCs and had to do sentences and word, you know, pronounce words because I couldn't talk. My speech was uh, really bad. When they said do your ABCs, could you do them right away or did you struggle? The first week I struggled with sentences, with words, and then the second week I started putting everything together, you know, sentences and how to spend my money. I mean, I couldn't even do that. Now he's finally home and taking stock of the traumatic experience he's just been through. It's emotional for him to think about how close he came to dying and all those who stuck by his side. Do you remember Dr. Brennan coming to see you? After all this, after I went through the, the first three weeks, I remember him coming in there still telling me I was lucky. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. And did he also tell you how your wife was your advocate? 
Oh, yeah. She was there every day. She never gave up on him. <laughs> Padgett told his story to try to help others. And take a look at this map from the CDC. This dark purple here is the area where they have the highest number of ehrlichiosis cases. So look, we're right here, we're in it. So it is here. So if you start feeling flu-like, or you wanna think about, you do wanna think about this and other tick-borne illnesses. Dr. Brennan says the best way to avoid it is not to get a tick. You can look for this story on our website wset.com to find ways to do that as well as links to much more information about this disease back to you